What's it like having a baby in Australia? Well, I'll tell you what, we're about to find out. G'day guys, my name's Ross. And this is Sam. And two years ago today, we moved to Australia from the UK to start a better life. We have just turned up at the birthing suite at the hospital, and I thought I'd give you a little tour before we get down to business. Problem is you gotta wear bloody masks. So this is the birthing suite. Pretty big room, man, isn't it? Yeah, really big. Beds and machines. I have no idea what that is. What is it for? It's to sit on like a toilet, I think. You, s you have babies on toilets? Yeah. Here is the bathroom. If you wanna have a water birth, complete with fun balls. I love this little sparkly chair. Oh, looks pretty good. I know there's been lots of questions about what the healthcare in Australia is like and how it compares to other countries. So I guess this video is gonna show you what it's like. The low ambient lighting. What's your first impressions, Manf? Uh, I don't really know. Just waiting to see what happens. No. Oh, nurse time, midwife time. A few moments later. Lamp's getting ready for some kind of scanniness. Policy at the hospital is I can't really film people. And I can't film the birth, but that would be really weird. So sorry, you're not getting weird birthing videos. You freaky perverts. Good thing is we've been told we can take the bloody mask off. What, you can as well? Yeah, oh, cool. it's only when they're in it. So to add a bit of context today, we're getting induced because Sam's got a few complications. She's got gestational diabetes as well as extra fluid. Yeah. Yeah. So right now she's hooked up to some weird monitor and this looks very, very similar to when we had Aurora and you got induced. Yeah. But apparently you might not have to get induced today. Maybe not. We will find out in 20 minutes. This could be our first natural birth. Not that the other one wasn't natural, but if you're a midwife watching this, you'll know a lot more about it than I do. Apparently this thing is some kind of birthing chair, but they don't ever use it and they don't recommend that people use it because apparently it causes more tearing. How long have we got to wait here, Manf? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? They're gonna come back and tell us what to do? Yeah. Are we gonna go home or are we not gonna go home? That is such a flattering angle, by the way. I'm gonna go make a coffee. So we've had the midwife in and she's given us the verdict and the news. Ma'am, you're staying in overnight. As a precaution and safety, just in case my water's broke. And that means I have to go home. I can stay here till about eight o'clock and then they'll call me and see how it goes from there. Please make sure your phone is on loud tonight. Well, I'll try, <laughs> but I can't really promise everything. Don't sleep through a phone call. Don't ask me to make promises I might not be able to keep. How are you finding the whole experience at the moment in comparison to England? I feel quite calm, actually. I feel quite calm and relaxed. I'm all right. I, I think I'm just still in a bit of shock that I'm actually having a baby. What about all the facilities and stuff? I mean, this room's massive. It's huge, it's cold. I'd say it's, I feel cold. Make sure you bring some socks, my feet are frozen. I remember the birthing place in Basingstoke and that was absolutely boiling. <laughs> it was like nearly as hot as Australia. How about all the staff and the equipment? How does it all compare? I really like the lady we've currently got. Her name is Tracy, she's lovely. She seems to know what she's doing. I feel like it could do with maybe some pictures up on the wall. Yeah, she's a bit plain Jane. She's a bit plain Jane, a bit bland. So, we'll get you on the ward, get you some food in, and then I'm going home for a sleep, I guess. Yeah. This is the ward with a slightly dodgy flickery light. Nice big room again. Let's just hope you're in here for as long as possible on your own. Get some nice sleep, sleep. And, and contractions. You got your own private telly. Hello. That's how you listen to the TV. Fantastic Australian TV. Sorted the light out for some more mood lighting. What you got for dinner, Manf? What you got? That looks like a cheese and tomato sandwich. Right, you all settled? Yep. Got everything? I'll leave you to it then. I'll be back about six in the morning. 
So this feels a little bit weird. Although technically I guess it was part of the plan that I could be coming home without Samantha. It does feel different in comparison to when we were in England and I just stayed all the time. I don't know whether this is kind of like COVID procedures or it's just the done thing, but I guess I'm feeling a little bit grateful that I can actually get a night's sleep before the madness happens. I don't know how Sam's feeling tonight. I am a little bit worried about her, but I guess there's nothing I can do. Better leave my phone on. The next day. Now, I'm not religious at all, but I kind of felt a little bit compelled to come in here considering Aurora's birth wasn't exactly the easiest. And I know with my luck, we're probably gonna get the same thing today. I remember the hardest thing when Aurora was born, I was waiting in the corridor outside the theatre, on my own, in my scrubs, wondering, oh my God, what is actually gonna happen now? And that was probably the lowest point of the whole birthing experience, just knowing that I'm completely useless in this whole situation. Is there a higher power? For the sake of a couple of minutes in here, let's hope it can do something positive for later. All right, so we'll go this morning. We are now in the birthing suite again, although we've got a bit of a fancier room this time. Ralph, how are you feeling? We've been told all of the things that are going to happen. Yeah, which could be anything, any of them. <laughs> so what they do in a controlled ARM, because the baby's head is not properly engaged. Or been about. And they're concerned that the cord is going to come down. No, they're not, they're not controlled anymore, they've checked it. Oh, okay. There's no cord around the head, so. So we're going to have a C-section? No, I don't think so. Oh, good. Because no. they, were, they were chucking that around. Yeah, no one wants a C-section. No one wants a C-section. So that's too much, good. Too much paperwork, don't want that. <laughs> this midwife is awesome. I'm going to give you a quick tour because this is the fancy room now. We even have a balcony that you're not allowed to go on. But the good thing is you can sit on the fancy sparkly seat and just watch the day go by. This room does have a slightly different picture, or a picture at all. I feel like this chick just keeps staring at me. Weird. We've also got more birthing balls than you can shake a stick at. Fancy chair if you want to have a shower. At about eight o'clock, apparently, all of the doctors are going to come back in and then they're going to break some waters and we're going to go for it. Fun, 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 Mount? Yeah. You look so happy. Two hours sleep. Great. Update. Mount, what's happening? had the gel put in. Gel to make your contractions come on. They're gonna try and do this as naturally as possible. <laughs> Good thing is though, you get to eat. Because it could be a six hour wait. Bloody six hour wait. It's a good job I've got a load of Cobra Kai to watch on Netflix. What are you doing? Picking out the raisins? Yeah, it's like... What's um, wrong with the raisins? It's like Alpen, you that's, know? It's not bad. You don't have to put them back in just because I said it's not bad. If you want to pick out the raisins, pick out the raisins. So we'll see if this stuff makes things happen. The guy said it should start working within 20 minutes. Hopefully. You might even have a baby before you finish that bit of cereal. <laughs> And so began the long wait for the gel to start working. Which sounds more interesting than it is because it's just staring at a monitor all of the time. Eventually Sam got some sleep, or more like just listening to some relaxing music on her headphones. I got to watch a little bit of Cobra Kai, which is actually my perfect guilty pleasure. An 80s throwback with kids kicking each other in the face, what more could you want? And time slowly ticked on. When lunch came for Sam, I had to go out and get my own, so naturally Red Rooster will suffice. Just in case Sam's food wasn't enough, I was on orders to get some snacks and some drinks. With her gestational diabetes, I was a little bit limited for choice. Those were literally the saddest snacks ever. After lunch, we went for a walk to see if that could stimulate any movement. But it turns out a hospital isn't really an interesting place to walk around. But the walk was starting to do something. Some things were starting to move. So we decided to walk a little bit more and see what else the hospital had to offer. And after staying in the hospital all morning, we actually discovered it was a really nice day. We went for coffee, to the good coffee van, because apparently there's a good one and a bad one. Turns out the coffee brings on more contractions too. A couple of flat whites later, and even I got a bit of a nap. I was starting to wonder when this baby was gonna come. Update. What are they doing, ma'am? We're breaking some waters, apparently. <laughs> We're breaking some waters. Everything on that weird machine over there looks good. 
Baby's gonna come out. Now, the midwife said it could happen pretty quickly, but I don't understand how quick it is. I've been here since six o'clock in the morning, so <laughs> things don't really happen quickly. So I said, come on, how quick is quick? And she said, well, if she's at about four centimeters now, it'll be about an hour per centimeter, and she needs to get to 10. Now, I did quick maths, and that's another six hours. I hope it's quicker than that. Don't forget the epidural. Can you put it up for another six hours of this month? No, not really. Well, it'll come as quick as it comes. 15 minutes later. What was broken, man? How do you feel? Wow. Uh, that That's... was a mental. Yeah. That was a lot of water. <gasps> Jesus. It was really warm and it just, it's like a waterfall. Like, I couldn't believe it. Thanks but for I, being so graphic. I didn't have that much last time. It has started. The process has started. <laughs> Almost instantly, Sam's contraction started. Turns out breaking your waters makes your contraction start really, really quickly. The anaesthetist were put on call because Sam needed that epidural straight away. A few inches later... Oh my god! There you go, man. Well, there you go. Well, Hello, what did you have? What have we got? Oh, you, you must have wings. 